Welcome to Missy's Imaginings. I thought I would go through the steps that I've been using to make a mask. I found that this method goes really quick and so I like it. Um, there's two different pattern pieces. There's the front piece which has a little bit more length here and then the lining piece which is a little bit shorter as you can see. Then I also make sure that when I cut them, my outside is decorated. I always do the lining out of a light color like this cream muslin or white muslin, just so that there's not a lot of dyes next to someone's face, especially if they have to be wearing it for extended periods of time. Then also, I have a non-woven fabric that I'm putting in as a filter and I'm cutting this the same as the lining piece. So I have two of those and then I have ties. Now you can use elastic or ties. For the sake of time, I simply cut one inch strips, folded them in half and surged the edge. Um, a lot of people are using bias tape or elastic or whatever, but I know elastic is in short supply and I just want this to be speedy. So these strips are 18 inches long and I just fed them through the serger, just zip, 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 and then separated them. So I have four strips that will go to one mask. So now let's get started on actual construction. So in doing the lining, I simply lay one of the filter pieces down then I lay one of the li or both of the lining pieces. There's both of there, and then I go ahead and put the other lining piece on. I'm going to sew the front edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. I back tack at the beginning. And I go around. I don't worry about pinning. I just zip around the edge. All right, then I lift my needle. I don't even cut that. Then I take the good side and put the good sides together or right sides together. And I do the same place, that front curve. go and back tack. Take it out of the machine. There we go. And just separate them. Trim off the really long ties. All right, so now I have these done. The next thing I do is I want to tack down the facing and the uh, filter layer. And that filter layer um, is you can use like a non-woven fabric such as interfacing and here I'm just going to stitch that down on the short edge about an eighth of an inch away from the fabric edge on both sides and I'm just tacking that down there we go I'll do the next side Make sure I've got both layers there. And trim the threads. And my finger. Don't trim your finger. All right, so now that I have that trimmed with the wrong side out, I'm going to turn back just a quarter of an inch and essentially what I'm doing is I'm hemming the short little edges of the facing. So I'm going to turn that to a quarter inch and just stitch down the side. I can get my thread out of the way. And I don't even worry about back tacking because that's going to be secured again when I put the mask together. There we go. And it's already been tacked or not 
contact, but it's already been sewn once, so you're kind of sewing over what's already sewn anyway. But this just gives a nice finished edge on the ends. So I'll run that in there. There we go. Take that out. All right, then with the right sides together, I'm going to open up this part and I'm gonna put the nose together up at the top there. And I just make my seam allowance on the inside and the seam allowance on the outside go opposite directions. And then I'm going to secure that with a clip, like so. Then I'm going to go down by the chin part, and I just try to have my seam allowance going the same direction as on the top. I don't know why, I'm just kind of neurotic that way. And I'm going to clip right there as well. Now, I'm simply going to sew from the edge of the facing there we go, just across the bottom, and then I'll do that across the top. So I'm just starting where uh, the facing is with a quarter inch seam allowance. And now I do back tack because now it's actual construction, and that's kind of what helps secure that little hem that I just did. So, oh, and you have right sides together, of course. I don't know if I actually said that. And Angela, this is for you. <laughs> All right, and we get to that edge. And back tack again. There we go. And that secures the, uh, the chin side. Now we'll go ahead and do the nose side. You just want to make sure that your uh, filter fabric is being caught in your seam. There we go. We're going to go around up on the nose and then back down the other side. And take it out. Alrighty. Then we're going to turn it so that it is right side out. And you're not even going to have to worry about ironing this, which is nice, because I know on the pleated ones there's lots of ironing you have to do, and on several of the other ones I've seen, people are ironing all the time. But this one, nope, no ironing. Okay, so we're going to turn it so it's right side out. There we go. Now, we're going to take this little end and see when you turn that, you can tell how these little um, edges of the front fabric naturally will turn with the right side kind of up like that from the seam allowance from what you've already sewn. So I just take that and I'm going to turn that end about a quarter of an inch like so and kind of press it with my finger. Now I'm going to take my little ties and I'm going to lay them underneath that little seam allowance that I've just folded. There we go. I've got strings everywhere. And I'm just going to tuck them in. If you have one long one, I think that actually even work better. If you have elastic, you'll have to kind of loop it from one side to the next. So it's actually easier to sew if you have to do ties. And then once they're in there, I'm going to roll that and fold it like this. And then I'm just going to clip that in place, just like that. And there's different kinds of clips you can use. So here's two different sides of quilting clips. Then I'm going to flip it around. 
And now on this side, let's see, I'll get a couple of my other ones, you can hear it. Then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to pull that so that those little quarter inch seam allowance, they tend to want to kind of roll in and I just kind of bring them back out so they're more of a quarter inch instead of having quite so much of an angle there. I'm going to fold that up just a little bit. I hope my hand's not in the way. There we go. I'm going to get my next two ties. Place one on this side and the other one over here. And I'm just tucking like a half inch of the tie underneath there and then I'm going to roll it up again like that. Here's a couple different kinds of clips you can use. If uh, you go to Dollar Tree, you can get packages with a whole bunch of these little um, paper binder clips and they will work just fine. So there we go. So now this is all clipped. Then to sew and secure these ties, we're going to do that when we top stitch. So I always start with the chin edge and I'm going to put this in my machine and you want to kind of roll your fabric just to make sure that your seam is pulled all the way out. There we go, so that it's not kind of lippy there. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in my machine with, machine with a quarter inch seam allowance or a quarter inch from the edge. And I'm going to start my needle just so that it's anchored in the machine when I take out the clip. So there we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew onto this little piece that's been folded over, keeping the edge of that fold with the edge of this, but not going to catch this in my sewing. And so I'm going to come across the top to anchor the tie. So I'm going to sew across there. And then I'll back tack but I'm going to stay on that fold of the front fabric and pivot. Now I'm going to come down the edge. Here again, I'm careful not to catch the lining. I'm staying right on the pretty fabric. Down to the other edge, pivot again. This time I'm going to press my back tack button so that I can back tack over that tie and then come forward. Now I'm going to be top stitching the edge where the nose is and here again I'm pulling that fabric so that my seam edge is the actual meeting of the fabrics and it's not kind of lipped over itself and about an eighth of an inch away from the edge, sixteenth of an inch, whatever you're comfortable with there. Hopefully my hand's not totally in the way. There we go. Coming back. Now we're going to do that same process. So now that I'm getting close, I'm going to go ahead and remove my clip. I'm going to sew over the top of that tie and back tack. There we go. I'm going to turn and pivot. I've got thread everywhere, don't I? There we go. I'm going to come straight down, being careful not to catch the lining. Then I'm going to pivot again. I'm going to back tack across the tie, come across, and now I'm doing the uh, chin side. I'm going to pull that fabric so that I've got a nice seam. There we go. Make sure this one, this one's got a little bit more of fabric bubble there. Okay, pull that edge and come back to where I started and back tap. Lift it up. All right, then I'm going to trim the threads out. Now I have my mask. There it is. The last step I'm going to do on these, just because it's been just a basic serge edge and I didn't finish those at all, I'm just going to tie a knot in the end and trim the threads so I don't have tons and tons of threads hanging off of there. 
So I'll just do that. Do this one. Oh, that one's a little long, but it's okay. Do my third one. There we go. Oh, trim that off. And one more. There we go. All right. And the mask is done. So however long this video was, that's how long it took to make a mask. Well, barring cutting it out. But that way, this one has a tie. I know elastic is in short supply. That's why I kind of wanted to do this one with ties. And with this method, it's really fast. This pocket allows the addition of another filter like that you can remove if you want to use tissue or something like that just for more protection it'll fit right in there and then it's easy to take in and out just because that gives you a bigger slit but that slit is not going to be in the front of you know where your face is to uh, it add any risk because it's way back by your ear kind of so anyway that's how I did these masks the reason I like this method is because there's so many of these seams where you're just doing one thing at a time and I can do a whole pile and just keep feeding the same step through the machine. So I'll take this and do the front edge of this and this and then I'll do the next one and I never even cut the thread. I just do like 10 of them at a time. Then I take it out and then I'll do you know the little hemming part and I'll just do 10 sides and I'll take it out and flip them around, do the other 10 sides, then cut them apart. And it's just a, an easy way to mass produce them if you're trying to do a lot of them quickly. So there you go. That's the steps I used. I will link the gal's video uh, below just so that you can see her video. She spends a little bit more time. So if you have um, a little bit more question on, on this or that and would like it explained better, you can watch her video but I like it because it goes quick and it still makes a really nice mask and I really like this pattern I will go ahead and this I adapted from the pattern I already posted but I kind of adapted it to use this method so I will be getting that video or I'm sorry I'll get that pattern ready as well and put it on the website for you if you want it so there you go thanks for coming by and I'll see you next time bye